most difficult times to teach my family about being Jewish is the most uninspiring times. And I'll explain what I mean by that. There will be times that I tell my kids and my wife, this is what we have to do. Mm -hmm. And for me, the most powerful times, Paul, is the times when I don't try and over-explain why, but just come down to saying, because we are Jewish. Yeah. Because it's who we are. And I deliberately, I, I deliberately do that at times, withholding a potential explanation that might be inspiring. As a Jew, there's times and ways where your freedoms, where your inclinations just don't matter. Israel is the nation of teachers and priests to priest for the other nations. In that capacity... As a teacher myself in various contexts, when I go to school, if I've had a bad day, bad morning, do the students get to know about that? Not no. necessarily, because I'm there for them. A priest has got even less freedoms, because in the Jewish context and being a Levite, <coughs> a priest is literally considered part of the furniture of the temple. Mm. I mean, you can't get more uninspiring than that. Yeah, right. You are considered like furniture. So much so that the Levites at the temple couldn't own land. You couldn't accumulate wealth like that. Right. So <clears throat> let's analyze it. Okay, so Israel is like that to some extent. We are understandably the punching bag for the powers of darkness. Mm -hmm. Things like the Holocaust will happen. Yeah. Things like October 7th will happen. Yeah. Hanukkah will happen. The expulsions from various countries will... Like, that's not surprising. That's because of who we are. Yeah. And which Jew, which person born into a Jewish family chose to be born into that family? Nobody. None. And I suspect the vast majority of them, if you had given them the choice, they wouldn't choose it. You'll be the most hated people group. It will affect <laughs> your family psychologically to many generations. You will have your name changed constantly. You won't belong in any country because no one wants you. And when you go back home to your own country, you'll be an occupier in your own country and have five yeah. nations attacking you. Um, how soon would you like to join? <laughs> Yeah, it's not the best analogy in the world, but it's the best one I could think of, which was the the military, right? It's like when I wore that uniform, there were things that what? I got the same accent as every American, well not every American, but a lot of Americans. I got I look like a lot of Americans. English is my first language. Uh, I have a passport. I have citizenship. I I supposedly have rights. Well, actually no you don't. <laughs> Now you can't just say whatever you want. You can't just cut your hair any way you want to. No, nope, you can't right. wear any clothes you want to to work. No, you don't get to go home until I tell you. No, nope, you don't get to go. You don't get to skip out of going to Iraq or uh, to war. No, you don't get to run and hide when the bullets are firing. No, nope, you don't get to go to bed just because you're tired. No, nope, you don't get to go home this weekend because you got to work the staff duty desk, right? And uh, meantime, what's everybody else doing in my generation? Living it up, man. Partying. Oh, yeah, we're having a good... We're building careers. We're going to college. We're having parties. And I'm sitting there in the middle of Iraq with a long metal pole stirring a bucket of feces doused in gasoline, burning, and saying, what did I, add? What did I get myself into? <laughs> exactly that. And now watch this. In that position, there's two ways for Paul to experience that. Number one, in absolute misery... Yep. And disjointedness and yep. hatred and anger and whatever else you can think of and self pity, or to be fully immersed and say, Somebody's got to do this in this moment. Mm -hmm. I'm yep. here. This is what I'm doing. And I'm going to be the best at what I do in this moment.